is quiet. Let's get lost. Driving on the empty pavement. Nowhere to hide. Pulsating rhythm in my veins. Streaming stars. Vibration unknown. Take me night. Carry me to ecstasy. Breathe me in. And exhale my vital life. Hi, everybody. This is Arthur with the day in Telos. And the sun is out. And it's still been a little bit cold, but it's the end of April, and May is coming here, and I hope you're in, just in time for Maypole on the May 1st. That's going to be a beautiful, uh, beautiful celebration of spring. Hey, I got a special guest here. Another one, a special guest. I got <laughs> Sarah Lise. Hi. Introduce yourself to the world, girl. This is the wide, <laughs> wi wild Wedgwood. Wild, no way. World Wide Web. Hey, there you <laughs> go. Believe me, everybody is watching. Yeah. So you think? Just keep you think this everybody's out there. watching? You think the whole world is watching right now? Individually, yeah, they are. Yeah, individually, they yeah. are. Okay. But the the kingdom of heaven is definitely here. Definitely watching. Woo! Woo! Off the hook today. <laughs> so you have such exciting things in your life going on. Give us in a, all of our a lives, clue actually. on what's yeah. been happening. Yeah, I'm Sarah Lee Sazriel. I am the founder and executive director of the Legion of Light Global Ministries. And I am the founder of the Sacred Village Project. And we, what we're doing right now is we're actually um, creating a village here in Mount Shasta. All right. Yeah. Yay. What's the street? What's the address? No. Nope. What the mountain? Nope. Nope. Not More yet. will be revealed later. Um, All we're right. keeping that information private, actually. Okay. Um, so what we're working on is, is acquiring the land and um, creating a, fa we're in phase one, mm. which is um, acquiring the land and getting everything ready for th the initial set of buildings that will be placed on the land. Wow, that sounds like you're about there. Well, yeah, we're on our way, definitely. I have a lot of people ready to put their hands in the dirt and get <sighs> ready to build. They're really excited, and I have people from all over the world that are interested in coming here and being a part of the village. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how many people have visions and dreams and say, the mountain calls me. Oh, the mountain or the, called or the me. City, the city calls me. Uh, yes. The yes. cities of light. Yes. Yeah. So for me, the Sacred Village Project is actually a, a larger project. It's a global project, and it's designing and co-creating eco-sustainable sacred cities of light all over the planet. So this is the first city of light that we will be establishing, and that will be a prototype for the other 12 sacred cities of light. And then in total, by the end of 2022, is the, the, the destination date for the completion of the 144 sacred cities of light. Wow. Right. And wait, what date was that? 2022. 2022. 10 years, wait, wait, 11 wait. years actually from wait, now. Wait a minute, we're still dealing with 2012, girl, you're getting ahead of well, yourself. Well, the reason for that is that these, are, these cities are built f with light. They're built differently than average construction. It's not something you build just with a material. It's actually something you build with a grid of light. Mm. So these cities will sustain through the shift and will be developed after the shift. So okay. there's the, the point of it is not right now as, as much as it's a, in the future and it's, it's a sustainable um, experience. So these are um, built with light codes and things of that nature. So they're very different than the average eco-village. And okay. part of what we're doing right now actually is the, sa the other aspect of the Sacred Village project is the documentary that we're developing right now where we're doing a worldwide eco-village tour mm. with sacred sound gatherings to all of the eco-villages, not every single one, but right. the predominant eco-villages in the world that are already established and also the potential sites of the sacred cities of light that we'll, we will be developing in the Sacred Village project. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. You know, in, in June, um, uh, July, I'm going to have a whole series of 
of uh, villages that are being brought here. So I want you to come back and we'll yes, touch definitely. base with a little bit more on, on, on that. Now, let me ask you, is this, is this your vision or is it somebody else's vision? You just hopped on? It's, I think, a on? lot of our, no, it's definitely my vision okay. that came Take, through Explain me. to me what, when you had this epiphany of a village, explain, what was it? Were you well, sleeping? Well, it started when I was four years old. Four, oh my gosh. I had a visitation from a group of divine beings when I was four. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Wake up, girl. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> so I was downloaded about this period in time, this uh, part of history and what would be happening at the time of the shift mm. and what the future would look like beyond the shift. And so I started sharing this with my parents at a very young age and they're like, oh, that's nice, honey. You know, like they had no idea what I was talking about and about they really didn't know what to there? do with me. Mom, can you see those people yeah. over there? You can't see those people over you there? You can't see them. Mom, oh, you're on the wrong right, plane. Right, exactly. Well, the thing about my parents that was so amazing is that they just, they didn't discourage me necessarily. They just... They listened and they just said, they acknowledged me, but they didn't necessarily tell me that I was wrong. And I think that was a really important aspect of growing up for me That's in my good. childhood. That's yeah. Good. Get, get a, yeah. some support there. Well, yeah, I did have support in that I could dream whatever I wanted to dream, and they never thwarted my dreams. Hey, per isn't se. that a song? Dream. Do it your way, dream your dream. I think so. Yeah. Somewhere in there. <laughs> so your parents supported you in a kind of a... They didn't necessarily kind of support a, me in terms of the dreaming aspect okay. of things, but they didn't stop me from dreaming. And Thank you, Mom, my father Dad. was a scientist, and we were all Ooh. brainiacs. I come from a scientific family, so um, I, I majored in architecture, and so he encouraged me to get my degree in architecture and to really... Um, pursue it through that avenue because at 11 years old I had my own blueprint from you know this city that was mm. going to be built so it, it's been in my life since the beginning of this incarnation anyway. have, you, <laughs> have you met Eugene Sway yet or I've met you? actually I've met Seth who works Seth, okay. directly with him yeah right right and I've been in Eugene's house so I've actually communicated a lot with them about oh, good, what they're good, doing. Good. I've communicated with almost everyone in town who's who's involved in something and who has ideas about community and stuff. So I'm kind of wow. engaged with a lot of people here and I kind of know what's going on with all the other projects. And really, it's all one project. Yes, it is. You know, it's all everyone has a spoke of the wheel. When he was when he was growing up young, uh -huh. he started doing t diddling around with uh, architectural stuff right and finally his parents got the, the big eye the big picture like wow we yes. should send him over here to that college exactly and so he went there and now he's developing mm -hmm. and he brought his his stuff up here not knowing anything about the telos community i and know right he, he got yeah. the word telos and he didn't even know what he it was, was about. It through the through a dictionary a greek dictionary and goes wow that sounds like a pretty cool name yeah, he had no idea exactly. about the city of Telos. So he is just as uh, innocent as you and I are when we got up here exactly. and started uh, and developing. And we're called to, to create this. Yes. Yeah, and I do believe that a lot of people that I've spoken to have had the same download about the cities of light mm -hmm. and the locations of the cities of light. So I know I'm not the only one. You're not. You're no, not, not at not. all. But I do know that what I have envisioned is um, unique to my unique to me specifically mm -hmm. um, in that I only really have a spoke of this particular wheel right and I have a global visionary council and we have conference calls and we talk about the development of the future and what we can do to help through this um, through this transition the transition yeah wow that's exciting yeah you know I came up here without any I just came up up here to get out of the heat and the, and the traffic of the big city, mm -hmm. Sacramento, and I just came up here. I knew this is where I was supposed to be. I had no agenda, and little by little, psh, psh, I started right. going to. I uh, volunteered for the television studio right. when it was in the, the Radio Star, and then wow. they moved here and said, Arthur. Why don't Get you do yourself a show? The, and an education and do your shows here. And it, I thought, Clicked. wow, maybe that's it. 
Yeah, and here you are supporting all of us. And we're bringing it all Get, together. Getting the word out. Yes. Yay. This is going to be the new Mecca of the world. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I do believe this is the first City of Light. Mm -hmm. I believe that Mount Shasta has been chosen for that specific reason. And that Mount Shasta, as you know, is an internationally known um, sacred mountain. Sacred mountain. Mm -hmm. All and, over the world. Right. We come here to bow at the base of the mountain, on the mountain. Are you familiar with the uh, solar uh, eclipse on May 20th, 2012? Yes. Right over Mount Shasta. That I didn't know. Right over Mount Shasta. Wow. We That's are my the, roommate's birthday. We That's are the really pivot interesting. point of that. Woo! That's going to be intense. We have over 5,000 people already signed up to be here weeks before as we get prepared. Wow. So let other people know. Yeah. It's gonna be big. Can you send me that information? Yes, I will. Yes, that would be great. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. I've had uh, Susan Isabel on mm. from the Shambhala, mm -hmm. and she gave us that tid just a little tidbit. Uh -huh. And in July, she's going to give us some more stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. So keep that in mind. Let people know. It's, yeah. it's, it's going to be, we're going to, how does she say it? Well, the world's going to pivot right over Mount Shasta. Interesting. Wow. So Fabulous. what else is happening? Okay, so what I was just thinking while you were talking is that um, there's an aspect of 2012 that people, a lot of people aren't aware of. And when we were, earlier we were talking about the three days, right? And going into the null, null zone of the photon belt is essentially mm -hmm. that three days of darkness that yes. everyone is talking about. So I don't know if that's been explained or not, but according to what I have learned is that there's a photon band of light right. that we will be entering into. And the null zone is that outer rim, okay. right? And during that, those days of darkness, there won't be any electricity, there'll be no sunlight, you won't, we won't have any access to any of those things. And accordingly, uh, everyone will probably fall asleep. Ooh. And during that time, a couple of things will be happening. My guidance has been I will be underground in an underground temple helping to assist with the ascension, mm. with the shift, and helping people step into the new frequency, to the fifth dimensional frequency. And then, there you go. right, so there'll be stations all over the planet that are doing that. And then there'll also be the people who go asleep, and they will be. Um, in the higher realms with their guides, um, deciding what their choice is, whether they're gonna choose to come back and be present on planet Earth in the fifth dimensional frequency, or they're gonna choose to move and stay with their karmic cycle and stay in the cycle of reincarnation and karma. Wow, that's good information. So this has come through me, and I don't know if it's <clears throat> accurate or not, but I just felt like it was, since we were talking about those three days, right. that it was important for people to really know what that's about so they're not scared because it's really a choice that people yeah. get to make. Yeah. Pause and I have a, have a mind calendar uh, show that we just put out. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be on, probably be in the next week or so. This will help people that realize that that's what we're going to go through. Yeah. So part of what the Sacred Village Project is about is that we're going to have wellness retreat centers in these locations, these cities of light, and it'll help people go from 3D to 5D. You know, okay. that'll help them get back to the earth, put their hands in the earth, get them back into their into bodies, the nature. out of, you know, 3D concrete jungle into reality, which is we're going to be living in, in um, coherence and in, in the flow with Mother Earth and the animals and all the different kingdoms. That is right? what people have lost. Yeah, people have really lost that. And so we are here to help them through that experience and bring them back to the na true nature of who they are. And also, there's a, I'm doing a retreat at Stewart Mineral Springs this Ooh. August, yes, wow. called the Cosmic Rebirth Intensive. Pick some video. Yes. We'll put, play it. So uh, people can sign up for that. And that's in August. And that's in August, August 22nd through 28th. You have a phone number that they can... Uh... Yes, my phone number is there. It'll come up on the right. screen, I'm sure, in a moment. <laughs> my phone number or my email, people okay. can contact me. And we're going to be doing a, a juice cleanse, so the physical detail. Talks. Can I be there? Yes, yeah, sure. And okay. and the and the spiritual detox as well. So we're gonna go through a five-day intensive 
of just bringing you from 3D to 5D and really understanding like the magic of life and getting Raw you food, detoxed. Life. Yes, and, and really getting yourself back. And at the end, we're going to have an ascension ceremony, a light body activation ceremony, and we'll and then the next day we'll um, move Float on away. into either a sweat lodge and then move on from there. And then, actually, we're going to Burning Man after that, so we're going to be oh <laughs> wow, what a big yeah. Uh, yeah. what a big jump from uh, the spirit spirit grounding to uh, a party. <laughs> well. There's spiritual aspects to Burning know, Man as well. So we're going to just carry it into Burning Man and we're going to just take our bliss and, and go there because it's All a really right. blissful experience. Well, sounds good. So August, you're going to have this? August 22nd through right. 26th. I want you to come back on and give us yeah. some more detail on that, okay? Yes. Because that that's... Um, People need to knew, know more about the raw foods. Yeah, it's really, really important. And part of what's really awesome about this retreat is we're going to get educated on how to juice how to take care of your body and your system, and how to be super conscious about what you put in your body. And I think that's a really important factor that a lot of people kind of miss in their they spirituality. Haven't been they haven't been well, taught. Well, they just haven't gotten the information that they need. And yeah. they try, and they do the best they can, but they don't always have someone going, okay, this is the deal, you mm -hmm. know, and this is, this, is, this is the education that you're looking for. And so there's a whole system to this that really helps. And in my own experience, the reason I went to raw foods is because I was diagnosed with cancer in 2008. Wow. <clears throat> and um, actually, sorry, 2007. Yeah, 2007. And so during that process, I said, <laughs> I don't have cancer. Excuse me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I do not have, I'm not old enough to have cancer. So hmm. I went into the, um, immediately did a master cleanse and went 100% raw. And, and I cured myself. I mean, I totally wow, took care of whatever was going take? on. And I was 100% raw for six months, and I was totally fine back, after two months. Did you, did you go back to the doctor and have it checked again? Yeah, and I was fine after the second month. I was totally and, and fine. And he didn't, he He's said, like, what? What how, uh, I'm Must like, have been wrong, something wrong with the you. machinery. Yeah, but, but I don't want to even get into that, but it was a racket, in my opinion. It was not a real diagnosis. Yeah. So. Well, the thing is, is you went into the raw foods, you went cleaning. I went, I cleansed my body, really and I is. took care, I took my life into my own hands. Yeah. And then Be the taking doctor care you are, being, girl. Right, being yes. the responsible person that I am to be responsible for my own life. This is your, this is your uh, this is temple. This is our flesh body temple. Yeah, yes. you know, nobody else has right. the right to say what you got in it, except for yourself. Fix right. it when it's when it's a little weak and keep it going. Yeah, keep it going. Because if you ascend, it's going to be that body. You're taking this body with you. And that's the other thing I wanted to bring up now that you mentioned it, mm -hmm. is that a lot of people in this ascension process, they don't really even know what they're doing. They, they don't, don't understand. They're like, oh, I'm just going to choose a new body. I'm like, really? They think they're going to get a new body. <laughs> you think? A lot of them are going to leave their old body and they yeah. be in the spirit no, realm and sorry. they're going to go, what, what, did I what do? am I doing? Wow. I'm swimming around and I don't have a body now. Okay, well, you got to ground everything. You have to literally fully incarnate it into this physical body, yeah. into this flesh body temple, and fully incarnate. And yeah. a lot of people are not incarnated even. They're not, They're not fully present in their bodies. And build that light body. Ground it into your body, build the light body, and then shift and transition into the new frequency. And you'll have everything you need with you, but if you don't fully release all the past and all the stuff that doesn't work, mm -hmm. you know, and then fully incarnate and activate that DNA within you that is already there and fully present, it just needs to be activated wow. and worked with, yeah. You so. know, it's amazing. I've read, I've talked to people and they think the rapture, the ascension, <laughs> um, yeah. they're going to, they, they, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. One it's like the, the things, end of the world. You know, it's one like, of the things no. that I've uh, been studying and bringing here on a day in Telos is exactly the degree of vibration change you right. have to make as, it, as you go up. Correct. And as, as you a bring doctor, that vibration up. Yeah, as a doctor of vibrational medicine, this is what I studied. This is what I learned, I observed in human behavior. And this is the reason why I went into this was so deeply was because at four years old to have a vision of the future and what is shown to you so completely and to understand and look at the way that people were reacting in my vision. And I, I, I got it right away. I was like, oh, I need to help them get from this point, point, point A, 
to point B. Exactly. That's my job. <laughs> it was really Great. like super clear from the very beginning. Wow. And Mother Earth, a big part of it was about Gaia and, and her transition and that I was one of her sisters and that I needed to be fully present for her and just make and help to her to ass and assist her with the human race into that shift in consciousness. Good girl. Yeah. I'm glad you're paying attention. Yeah, me too. Now, are you having any other uh, uh, classes or anything that you um, want to talk about? I'm actually headed out to Eden Hot Springs for, for a retreat out there in Arizona, wow. some sacred pools there. I'll be doing that I for a couple weeks. I caught you just in time, I guess. Yeah. Oh, we're having a screening in the film that I um, associate produced in uh, Los Angeles, and Ooh. it's a metaphysical documentary called Three Magic Words. Three? Three. Magic. Three Magic Words. words. Okay. And when movie. is that going to be? Movie.com. So threemagicwordsmovie.com. Oh, okay, you can go on the yeah, internet. Yeah, you can go on the internet. There, we're going to have a screening here in Mount Shasta at the end of May around Memorial Day weekend. Keep me informed. Yes. We'll do some uh, some yeah. some uh, sponsoring. You know, we'll talk about it and let yeah. people know about it. Yeah. So we're going to do a screening of that here, and we'll also probably do a light body activation ceremony along with it. Yeah. And also a raw food class with it as well. So we're going to wow. do sort of we a We should do a light a body activation right here. That would be interesting, I think actually. That would be very That'd awesome. That would be a two-hour show. That's easy. all right. We can put it in parts. Now, I was uh, <laughs> in the... Uh, it would be kind of difficult to watch it in parts, I think. <laughs> in, in the late... Well, in the 90s, uh, I was guided to go sleep underneath a pyramid. Oh, yeah. And take the Ethereum gold... Ethereum gold? And uh, I, I had The white powder gold? The white powder gold. Well, they're Ethereum gold, and then the next step is the white powder gold. Right. And I read how it opens up the, the brain. And the pineal both, gland. Both, both pieces. And so I, 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 you know, I thought I'm game for, you know, a, a study on myself. And so I had a friend come over one day. She was really intuitive. And we were talking, and all of a sudden she just stopped. She says, who's in your room? Uh, nobody's in my room. I'm, I'm the only one here, except for you. Who's that over there in the corner? I couldn't see it, but she was intuitive enough to see it. And then she looked at me. Wow. That's you. And then I realized. So an aspect she of you. She can see my light body. Yes. Anyway, it scared her so bad she had to leave right there. But then that was the first tune in that. What I was doing, raising was my vibration, activating. was happening. Yeah. When I do do private sessions as well. I can do them over oh. the phone, over Skype, in person. Uh -huh. And partially what I do is, one of the aspects, I'm a crystal healer, and I work with crystals to activate the light body, and I can do it without the crystals as well. Wow. But I work one-on-one -on -one with people to get them cleared of, of like Stuff. disembodied entities, attachments, you know, things that are standing in the way, like shields, plates, you know, whatever's going on in there, seven layers out. Wow. So I can see seven layers out in your field. What, How in your do I look today? Field. You look great, actually. Do I? Oh. Yeah. I've been working on myself for today. years now. Yeah. And then that, uh, I keep, uh, you know, I kind of do this. Yeah, and I'm we on all my do. Up, up point again. Yeah, we all do go through phases yeah. where we're, you know, we're you ups used and downs, to it. flows. Yeah. And then you, you go up a little bit more. Yep. So we have five more minutes to go. Wow, see that flew hey, by. So what's in the next couple minutes? Give me uh, something that I'm gonna on recap. Your heart. I'm gonna I'm gonna recap too because okay. I think it's really important what we've all what we've been talking about. One is the shift and, and assisting people and helping them through the shift. Okay. And you know, everybody collectively working together as a community here in Mount Shasta and how important that is that we all work together because we all have our designated spoke in the wheel. Yes. And I think that's the most important thing that I could say is that let's join together and work together to create a, a place where people, a sacred city of light, where people can come and, and decompress in. and ground in and get into their light body and understand what that is so that can they we do can a, move uh, forth. Can we do a, a special on the light body itself? Oh, absolutely. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that. Sure. When, when are you going to be back in town? Mid-May. Mid-May. Mid so uh, maybe in June I'll, uh, I'll bring yeah. you in. Okay. I'm pretty well booked. Yeah, People I'm are really booked too. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out. <laughs> hey, I received that. All right? 
because it's uh, already done. I think I, <laughs> I, I think that people have heard me talk about the light body. Mm -hmm. But they Plenty, don't actually really but know they're going what like, that is. What, what do you mean, mean this light body? Well, our and I try structures, to our it? physical structures are going from a carbon-based body to a crystalline structure. There you go. And our, our pineal glands are made of calcite. Actually, we have calcite in our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. And so that, that calcification or that calcite, the crystallization of those aspects of, of those glands are what are bringing the, the crystalline light body into formation. Ah. So as we increase our vibration and the vibratory frequency raises up, we start to expand out. And in the Celestine Prophecy, I don't know if you remember in that book, they talked about how the vibration went up so far that they became invisible to the other people standing there. You That's are. essentially what's happening. That's all they need to know. Right. Is to step into the next dimension. Yeah, and it's is, all uh, here. We're, we're, we're physically present for it. So yes. it's like we get to take everything with us yes. that we choose to take with us. And it doesn't have to be a scary thing. It can no. be a beautiful expansion of reality. That's wow. really what it is. All right. I think your music is going to come on. Oh, great. And I want to thank you very much for being <laughs> thank a, you. a special guest. Blessings. Because it's going to bring more people into the knowledge of what Mount Shasta is really bringing about, to yes. the world. Absolutely. Yes. We are an island. A, a, we a really Mecca. are. And uh, we only have, you know, maybe 20,000 people right now, but eventually this will be an island of, of, uh, uh, of the place of destiny and a place where people the Garden of Eden. Thank you, everybody. This is Arthur. And so as I turn within, and tell us. I recognize that there is only one power, one presence, one activity. So, um, this pattern that connects beats my heart. I am all that is. Pumps blood through my veins. The spiral twist of a flower in bloom. Shiva. Shakti. Omniscient. Omnipresent. Yet closer than my breath. The divine masculine and divine feminine. Emerging as one. I am this power. So I speak with divine authority about my life. The universe quickens to meet my every need. 